The Hawker Hunter F1 flies for the UK in War Thunder. Let's check it out. In the immediate aftermath of World War II, the British aviation industry was working on a pretty large number of projects for new jet-powered aircraft to utilize some of the new engine designs that were on the drawing board at the time. The Gloucester Meteor was proving highly successful, but the RAF's leadership knew that jet aircraft performance was likely to advance pretty rapidly in the upcoming decade, and they provided generous funding to new design projects including the P-1067, which was being worked on by the Hawker Company to meet a requirement filed in 1946 for a new daylight jet interceptor. The first prototype flew in 1951, powered by the all-new Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet engine, and the testing program proceeded without much of the drama that plagued a lot of the other early jet programs. Only two years later, the first prototype of the standard production model F-1 took to the air and included a number of improvements over the P-1067, including an upgraded version of the Avon engine. The first Hunters entered service in 1954 and replaced a number of older designs, like the Meteor, as quickly as the production lines could supply them. The primary shortcoming of the Hunter F-1 was limited range and flight endurance, both as the result of limited internal fuel capacity, and also the Avon engine being rather thirsty. This was alleviated to a degree by the addition of drop tanks to later versions, but the F-1 model was limited to point defense interceptor duties, basically because of the range issues. Only about 140 of the original F-1 were built, as later models offered significant improvements, and production of the F-1 ceased in January of 1955, a very short production run of only two years. What we have in War Thunder is simply the Hunter F-1, a jet fighter in rank 6 of the British Air Tree at battle rating 9.0. The plane gets the AN-APG-30 radar rangefinder, and it's basically a pretty simplistic radar rangefinder with an effective range of about 2 kilometers. As always, it doesn't really do much for you outside of simulator battles. The Hunter F-1 doesn't get a radar warning receiver or any kind of countermeasures. The plane's primary armament, uh, well, its only armament, is a set of four 30mm Aden cannons. These cannons punch very hard, with a one-second burst having over 20 kilograms of firepower combined with a selection of some pretty good ammo belts to go along with it. The Air Target's belt, or the Stealth belt, will probably be your go-to for air combat, depending on your playstyle, with the Default belt and the Ground Target's belt generally being good enough to do some respectable damage to Ground Targets. This version of the Hunter doesn't carry any kind of additional external weapons, so the four Aiden cannons are all you get. The Hunter F-1 has some good points and not-so-good points with its flight performance. Generally speaking, it has a solid engine with decent acceleration and a good rate of climb, but it's still subsonic in level flight, and it doesn't have an afterburner. It's faster than a lot of the other subsonic gunfighters, but it's not as maneuverable as most of them in terms of its raw turning performance, so you have to be careful how you fly it. Strong energy maneuvers, like a high yo-yo, tend to work much better for the Hunter than pure turn rate maneuvers, like flat scissors or a two-circle flow. Additionally, the Hunter has combat flaps that can be deployed at relatively high speed. Flying the F-1 out into air battles can present challenges, but it can also be a lot of fun. Really, the first thing you should do is check the scoreboard and see if you've been up-tiered. Uh, no kidding, this is crazy important. The Hunter F-1 suffers badly from BR compression, and if you get up-tiered in a match, you may find yourself completely outclassed by the entire enemy team and being swarmed up on by Mach 2 jets with decent missiles who smell an easy kill whenever a Hunter shows up. Up-tier matches require a far more defensive playstyle, 
and generally benefit from trying to stay with your team's power ball instead of climbing out to be a vulture or anything like that. I can't stress strongly enough how badly the hunter is outclassed by the matchmaker in an up tier. With no radar warning receiver or countermeasures, if it gets put in a match against like F4Cs and stuff, the thing can just find itself flying along, minding its own business, and then BAM! Smacked by a semi-active radar missile from 8 kilometers away, seemingly out of nowhere, and you'll have no idea that you are even under attack. Be careful. If you get down-tiered or matched evenly, you'll have a bit more flexibility, as the Hunter is far more evenly matched against other subsonic gunslingers, and its engine power can even give it an advantage against some of them. My general playstyle in evenly tiered matches is to climb out at the start and give a check around if there are any bombers to intercept. Then, see what develops below me as I get closer to the action. I'm showing some variety in the gameplay footage here, but it's worth re-emphasizing that this plane does especially well in high-speed attacks rather than close-in turn fighting, and especially fighting other subsonic jets, the most successful matches I had with this were ones where I did long slashing high-speed passes through the battlefield instead of getting sucked into it and finding myself in dogfights with things that could outturn me. It's not very interesting to watch that sort of high-speed striking pass gameplay, but it works better in practice, and if you use the F-1 to make high-speed attacks on other subsonic aircraft, it's possible to find some good success. For ground attack, the Hunter is limited to using its cannons. Now, they can destroy light and medium tanks if you get a good angle on them, and they can blow up pillboxes in air realistic battles. It finds itself exceptionally vulnerable to SAMs in ground RB, but if you can get good at aiming the cannons at enemy tanks, it can be effective with a little practice. It's worth mentioning that in all game modes, it can only take a maximum of 16 minutes of fuel. So, if a match goes out to time, you'll have to land at least once. Visually, the Hunter F1 has that distinct 1950s British look, and it's entirely conventional in its layout. There are some really great paint jobs available for this plane, and as everyone knows, planes get more kills if you have a cool skin for them, so make sure you check those out. The landing performance is decent, but you need a lot of runway to slow down. The Hunter can drop gear and landing flaps a bit over 400 kilometers an hour, but it doesn't have a drag chute, so you're relying entirely on its wheel brakes to slow down. Now, the Hunter has a pretty good cockpit. The visibility is excellent, the visual detail is great, and my only gripe is that the instruments are a little lower than I usually prefer. But the forward view is amazing, so it kind of evens out. Overall, A plus cockpit. To close out on the Hunter F1. This plane has very good cannons, which can demolish targets if you can connect even a very short burst. It has good engine power for a subsonic jet, and it retains energy fairly well in light to moderate maneuvers. However, it's totally defenseless in an up tier, with no countermeasures or radar warning receiver, and a subsonic maximum speed. It isn't as maneuverable as a lot of the other jets it'll go up against, and it doesn't have any external weapons. The final verdict on the Hunter F1 is that the plane is pretty fun to fly if you get evenly tiered or down tiered, but it can be an exercise in frustration if you get up tiered. Out of all the planes I've reviewed so far, the F1 is probably like in the top five for owing its success or failure more to the matchmaker than to the player. As always, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.